Let's start with Bitcoin, okay? Because that, you've made very famous and just spot on calls with this crypto, which you say basically is a sleeping beauty right now. Yeah. It's asleep. Yes, it is. Absolutely, it is. And I think that's part, partly due to you have some consolidation going on because you have people buying for currency issues with, we know the dollar has been ripping high, mm -hmm. crushing a lot of currencies. So that's giving it a little bit of a bid. And then you also have sellers that are still unsure about it. There's lack of regulation, there's lack of clarity. And so it's this midpoint. And when you get sleeping chart, it basically means buyers and sellers are equaling themselves, right? They're equaling each other out. And that's keeping price in a really, really tight zone, essentially. So what is one to do with Bitcoin here because we had a lot of folks buying on the way down but it's almost like no one really wants to touch it right now. Yeah and again the craziest thing is that you have the stock market way wilder than crypto. Absolutely. You have currency markets which almost never happens wilder, bond markets wilder and here you have crypto just going nowhere but what happens is when these things go to sleep when they wake up there's a mega moon. And so that's the question is, which way is it going to go? Mega, that it would beat its all-time high, no, mega? Not that mega yet. Okay. Eventually, yes, I do have that long-term thought process. But I think in the near term, I'm looking for actually a move up, probably to 25,000, which okay. from here would be a nice chunk of change. But eventually, reality is going to set back in, and I still, unfortunately, don't think the lows are in yet. Okay, the lows are, because you had spoken about 12,000, 10,000, yeah. that's still in the cards for you. I still see it in the cards, yes. I just think that we're going to get to this really risk adverse period. And you might think right now is risk yeah. adverse, but S&P down 25, 20% to me isn't risk adverse when you look at 2009 or even okay. 2020. You mentioned the S&P, let's talk about it because the corrections have been vicious, they've been fast, it seems impossible to pick a bottom here. What do you see for the S&P? So S&P right now into the midterms, we've talked about how you likely get this little bit of a bid. Yeah. We saw the Wall Street Journal article that just came out, I think it was last Friday, talking about how the Fed may raise 75 basis points and then pause. And the market just loves that because it's the first hint that the Fed is wavering. We've seen housing data, that was very weak. The markets love that. The dollar started to come in. So all the things are working for the market to lift into the midterms. And then what I'm concerned about is after the midterms, how does the economy look and how do things start to slide? Which way do you think the VIX could break here? So I think in the near term, VIX is gonna head lower, but I think the VIX still has a long upside move in 2023. And so you have to think about it like this, is we're entering this unprecedented period where investors, remember, think about how many new investors came into the market over the last five years or so. They've never experienced a prolonged bear market. So it's gonna be one that tests their kind of ability to just stay with the trade, stay with the investments in light of all the negativity that they're gonna hear about an economy that is gonna be stuck in a recession for potentially a long period of time. And I've gone on record and I said it yesterday in the speech, that I think we don't see new all-time highs for 10 years in the S&P. Wow, not yeah. new for, wow, okay. Let's talk about the Federal Reserve, which you said Wall Street Journal had covered the fact that we might have one rate hike. So you agree with that, that there'd be a pivot, there'd be a change, yes, a counter shift? I do think so. I think honestly, they're going even a little too far. And I've said that before. Yeah, that you have. Front loading this because they're reacting instead of foreshadowing or looking ahead. And they're reacting to the fact that they were late, they were wrong on transitory and all yeah. these things. And so they're overcompensating. And I really worry that at some point the consumer is going to run out of money. We paid, so many people paid down their credit cards and everything. Now they're starting to build that back up. When that stops and they don't have that money, the economy is going to take a big dive. So is there anything you'd be buying in the S&P right now? Yeah, so there's always really good opportunities out there in bull and bear markets. And so something like Meta makes sense to yeah. me. Everyone's hating on it. Everyone's saying they're spending too much money on the metaverse. And so that what that does is it creates this negative kind of vibe going into their earnings coming up. And just overall, people's expectations are so low. And we've seen price come down, I think, 65% off of its highs. So something like that, where it's now trading at a Ford PE of 10, yeah. it makes sense in this type of environment. And expectations are just so low. What do you do with Apple? Apple, I still think, is overvalued. I do. I okay. will look historically, right? So think about this, right? You go back in any other period in time, a stock like Apple was always trading at like a 10 or 12 PE ratio. It's still north of 20. So I know people are just diehard iPhone yeah. people, uh, but... Okay, one, let me just sneak one more in here because okay. I'm curious to get your observations on Netflix and we see what they're doing with the subscription. They're going to start charging per account and whatnot. Yeah. And people are obviously going to be cutting back this inflationary environment. Where do you see Netflix? 
So Netflix has had a monster move, number one, right? And from $160 now to $280 or so. So that's a huge move up. But remember when it was down at the lows, everyone was writing it off. Oh, yeah. Netflix content yeah. stinks. Yeah. Every, yeah. That's what people need to look for. If you're an investor out there, you need to look for quality names that everyone's now turned super negative on and price has then gotten crushed because of it. So at this point, I'm not buying Netflix because it's rallied way too much, but I am looking at names like Walt, like Discovery, the, yep. the HBO Max yep. combination, as well as Paramount, because those are still trading at very low valuations. We're obviously at this conference where gold is a huge conversation oh. piece and the frustration with investors with the gold price right now. But overall, compared to other assets, gold has been holding its own. At the start of the year, it was your pick to be the best performing asset. We're about to enter November. Gareth, have your thoughts changed? at all? And that's a good question. So, so far I've been right. It's been the best performing yes. in terms of dollars. It's still down on the year, yes. but just a little bit. But for me, I'm still going to go into 2023 still thinking it's going to be the best performing asset. All right now that's all it's a harder this one's harder because bitcoin <laughs> is close to the low and a simple bounce on bitcoin could be 30 percent which is hard for gold to do but i still think bitcoin will head down towards 12 13 maybe sub 10 and i think gold is getting close to its meteoric run what do you do with the miners are you looking at any gold miners juniors mid-tiers majors yes yeah, so i'd stay away from the juniors right now and go <laughs> yeah. to the quality names like okay. the newmont mining yeah. but i do think as inflation comes down those are gonna be the ones to pick it up as gold goes up. You're gonna see those really rebound because if you look at the miners, they've been cut almost in half, a lot of them. And so there's a lot of value if inflation comes down. Because remember that the miners got crushed not only because gold wasn't going up that much, yeah. but inflation, all their input costs were going sky high. So they so, got smoked, but that should well, improve. Well, why wouldn't you just go shopping now for some juniors that are- I just worry about where their balance sheets are. I'd have to look at their okay. overall stuff because mining costs aren't gonna come down. They're just Correct. gonna stop going up further and further Fair and enough. I just want to make sure they can survive. Okay, for the crypto folks out there, they love when you talk about Cardano, Solana, Polkadot. What, yeah. what does Gareth like right now? I do like Cardano Okay. right now. I do uh, a little bit of Solana short term, okay. um, Avalanche, um, Ethereum, Bitcoin. I think all of those in the near term are quality and I think you'll get a pop. But I do worry about the longer term. I think if you're a long term investor, you focus on best of breed, which is Bitcoin and Ethereum. What about XRP? <sighs> XRP is just so <laughs> tricky. So you're basically with XRP, it's all hovering on this judge's decision. And I hate as an investor, if you can't quantify, if you don't have some insight into what's going on in that brain, then you really have to be careful about committing capital. Do you think the Celsius disaster dark clouds are hovering still over the industry or have we passed that? I think we've passed that. I think the big hover right now is this regulation, right? And it's keeping so much money on the sidelines. Pension funds, hedge funds, all these people, I do believe they wanna invest. They see the light of Bitcoin and what it can do to the system and how it can improve yeah. things. But there's just, what's the rules? And remember, they all have these fiduciary responsibilities yeah. to their clients where they can't be like, oh, let's just invest some anyways and hope for the best. Without knowing the rules, they can't do it. And so my big thing is we get these regulations out, at least we know and I think money will start to flow in 